We're now going to show that monads in spans are small categories. That is, if we take the bi-category of spans in sets, we can look at monads in there, and what we get out are precisely categories. Now, remind us, let's remind ourselves what a monad is going to be. We've got to have a zero cell, we've got to have a one cell going from that zero cell to itself, and we've got to have a unit and a multiplication. And all of this has to happen inside our bicategory of spans. So let's see what this is. Uh, we have a zero cell. Well, the zero cells in span set are just sets. So we've got a set, i.e. a set which I'm going to suggest to be called C0. We've got to have a one cell from C0 to itself. So we've got to have a span like that. Hmm, that's already looking quite promising, right? Because this can, this can be our set of morphisms, and this is the source function, and that's the target function, giving us the source and target variable function. Right, so what else have we got to have? We've got to have a unit. We have to have eta, eta, which has to go from one to our spam thing. So what's that going to look like? Well, what's the unit? I don't think I ever told you what the unit in this in, in this bicategory was actually. But the unit is just the thing that's the sort of the most boring possible span you could ever think of. That's just got the identity here and the identity here. And so we've got to have a function going to our C1. So what does that mean? It says for every object, we're going to count these as the objects, and these are the morphisms. For every object, we produce a morphism where the source of the morphism is the object we started with, and the target of the morphism is the object we started with. So this is just a putative identity, right? It takes x to something, some morphism from x to x. That's a bit confusing. I'll wipe that off very fast. So now what we've got to have is a multiplication as well, which has to go from c1 squared to C1. So first of all, we better see what C1 squared is. We've got to take our span and compose it with itself. So here's S, T, S, T. We're going to compose it with itself, which means we take a pullback here. So what on earth is this pullback? Well, look, a pullback in set is a pair of things, one in here and one in here, such that they get mapped to the same place down here. So it's a morphism and another morphism where the target of this morphism equals the source of this morphism. So it's just a composable pair. So that's composable pairs. And now we've got to have a map of spans back to our original span. So I'm going to draw this going up the blackboard. Here's our original span, source and target. So what we've got to have is a mu that goes like that. What does this say? For every composable pair, we produce a morphism where the source of that morphism is the source of the first of our composable pairs, and the target of that morphism is the target of our second composable pair. So this is, of course, just a putative composition. So this is uh, taking a, comp a pair of composable morphisms like this and sending them to a morphism whose source is the source of the first one and whose target is the target of the second one. So then you can check, then you can check that the usual monad axioms give you the usual category axioms and everything works beautifully. Now what the other thing that this gives us, so uh, let's work this off. We can wonder what happens if we take monads in span E for some other E. So monads in span E in general are categories internal to E. Well, you might ask me, what's a category internal to E? And I'll say to you, oh, well, it's a monad in span E, and that would not be very helpful of me. But you can write out what this is now, because it's actually just exactly what I wrote on the board and I've unhelpfully wiped off. But you can rewind, of course, and see what it was. Which is, you've got to have an object's object. You have, so what's a category internal to E? An internal category in E has an object's object, an object's object, C0, a morphism's object, C1, T1, 
together with source and target maps, just exactly as we had before. And then composition is given by that pullback we just had. We have identity and composition as before, and the usual axioms. So we can take internal categories in all sorts of other places, and one rather interesting place to take internal categories is the category of categories themselves, and that's what we'll do next time.